Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Last week, the seven star terror event for Mewtwo went live in Scarlet and Violet and has been one of the most difficult seven star terror events that we've had in the game since its release. A lot of players have been having issues with it, having to resort to going online to get the Mewtwo, beat it with the Mew and an array of other issues. I even went as far to say as it was probably gonna be impossible to do solo in your game, but I have to say I was completely wrong. In today's video, we're going to go over the method for you to solo this Mewtwo in your game. Everything that you're going to need to know to be able to do it. So even if you haven't got a Nintendo Online subscription, you're going to be able to get this Mewtwo in your game and using a Mew. So before we get into all of the prereqs, the builds, the details and how you actually do this in your game, I have to give some prerequisites before this because this has been a pretty arduous two day task on my end trying to do this in game kind of figure out how it works everything that you need to kind of go your way and let me just say this is the tip of the iceberg you're going to need to have a lot of RNG go your way you're going to need a lot of luck you're going to need specific things to fall in place for you at precise times so you're really going to have to go into this with a lot of patience. Set yourself up that this will be very, very difficult and it might take you a long time to do. The one plus side of this is the Mewtwo 7 Star Terror Raid is running until the 17th of September. So if you don't have that Nintendo Online subscription, you can't go online to join other players to help you beat the Mewtwo. Then you've got at least a couple of weeks to be able to do this in your game Kind of follow this guide. Hopefully everything in here will give you all the right tools, all the right setup for you to have the best chance of being able to beat the Mewtwo, but it's no guarantee. Like I say, you're going to need to have a lot of luck and an, a heck of a lot more patience to be able to do this in your game. So make sure when you're going into it, have an open mind that this is not going to be something that you're going to be like a normal solo raid build that we kind of covered on the channel and you're going to be able to go into it, maybe do it the first time or maybe three times later. This could take multiple times like and i talk in a lot of multiple times so just bear that in mind when you go into it we'll get into what look you're going to need along the way and everything with that so we'll jump across into game now and we'll start off with the particular build before we get into the build and the strategy that we will be using in today's video i have to give a huge shout out to japanese player soupy pistol that is their youtube channel so if you want to check out their youtube channel I have dropped them a subscribe, a follow, or check out their content. It is all in Japanese, though, so bear that in mind. But I'm pretty sure they'll probably have more good strategies for Seven Star Terror Raids in future. So I'm sure they would appreciate the support. Uh, I just want to give them a big shout out because without their strategy and kind of figuring this out in the first place, we wouldn't have this video to be able to share. And I wanted to kind of share this video so more people were aware of this strategy, especially those of you that don't have a Nintendo Online subscription and are stuck with the Mewtwo raid in your game, but you can't beat it because you can't get online to have support from fellow players online. At least with this method, it does give you a way, even though it's not guaranteed, like I've said, it does give you a way to be able to go into the game. And if nothing else, it's a massive challenge for you to go in and probably beat one of the hardest things that we've ever seen in any Pokemon game ever. So getting into the build, I've tweaked it slightly from the build that Super Pistol kind of ran, but this is basically the Mew that you're going to want to build to take in to be able to beat the Mewtwo solo in your game. You're going to want to have the bug terror typing on it. It has to be level 100. Make sure you are maxing out those IVs and hyper training the stats that it hasn't got 31 in. And it is holding that metronome item. Of course, level 100 as well goes without saying for this one. And then the moveset itself is going to be Mud Slap, Amnesia, Bulk Up, Leech Life. Just for a bit of context on what these moves do. Mud Slap is a ground type attack, very weak, 20 base power, but it does reduce the accuracy on a target Pokemon, even through a shield every time you use it. So meaning their attacks aren't likely to hit the more you use it. Amnesia boosts your special defense by two stages every time you use it. Bulk Up boosts your attack and your defense stat a single time every time you use it. And Leech Life is a base 80 power bug type attack that recovers 50% of the damage that you do to your target. So the one thing I would make sure to remember when you are putting this moveset together is PP Max, Mud Slap and Leech Life. That is super important going into this raid it is going to make it possible to do without PP Max in these moves. It's going to make it very difficult and you're going to risk not being able to finish the raid in the end game because it's kind of in three phases and we'll get into that in a moment. But just make sure that you do PP Max, the Mud Slap and the Leech Life. 
you can pick up PP ups at any Chansey supply store around the Paldea region, so they're easy to get. Synchronize is the ability that doesn't change. Adamant is the nature on the Mewtwo, and the EV spread is 252 EVs in attack, 210 in defense, and then 48 in speed. So they are the EVs. All of the build details will be down in the description if you want to take a closer look at it outside or after the video to make sure you've got the build right. But this is what the Mew should look like once you've got it put together in your game. Now, the other prerequisite that you're going to have to make sure that you do have when going into Battle Mewtwo is going to be your partnering NPC Pokemon because you're going to get random Pokemon put with you when you go into the raid. But there is a method to do to make it so you can kind of control what Pokemon come into the raid with you. Now, you're going to need specifically two Pokemon out of four Pokemon to come into this raid with. One of these Pokemon that you're going to need every single raid is going to be Belly Bolt. And when you've got that Belly Bolt, you want to be pairing it with one of three other Pokemon. They are going to be either Weavile, Arcanine or Mudsdale. Now, Belly Bolt is really important for this raid because it's got access to Discharge, primarily the reason why we're bringing it to this raid. And Discharge has a high percentage chance to paralyze Mewtwo, meaning that it's only got a 75% chance to move when it is paralyzed. So you're kind of reducing down the amount of time or chances that it's got of actually attacking each turn. So that puts the odds a little bit in your favor. Belly Bolt, really good at that and can paralyze through the shield as well which just gives you a bit extra RNG on your side of things. Now, the other partnering Pokemon that you're going to want, I would say go for a two perfect partnering Pokemon, but this can be done with just one of these next three Pokemon. So they are Weavile and Arcanine. The reasons that you're going to need one of these two Pokemon is because they have access to Leer. Now, if you've got Arcanine or Weavile, they're not going to be able to reduce the defense stat on the Mewtwo with Leer until that shield is broken, but that's fine because that's how the strategy works. But that's the reason why you've got one of these two Pokemon pairing up with Belly Bolt. The other one that you can pair up is Mudsdale because it does have access to Rock Smash. So Rock Smash is a move that has a 50% chance to reduce the defense stat on the Mewtwo um, every time it uses it. So that is kind of a pseudo Leer, uh, but it does damage every time it hits as well. So, but only a 50% chance to lower the defense. But it is really imperative that you've got one of these three Pokemon to lower the defense stat on the Mewtwo. It's going to mean that your damage output is enough to be able to kind of finish it off in the end game. So making sure you've got Belly Bolt and either one of these three, Weavile, Arcanine or Mudsdale next to the Belly Bolt with your Mew is going to set you up perfectly to go into this raid. So you're able to execute this strategy and be able to solo the Mewtwo in your game. So like I mentioned a little bit earlier, you can control what Pokemon come into the raid with you, but there is a little bit of a setup before you go into the actual Mewtwo raid. What you're going to need to do is find another Terror Raid den around Paldea. At the moment, there is the Spotlight Terror Raid events for Blissey going on. So find a Blissey Raid den. This will just speed things up because it's easier to run through and beat once you've found those perfect partnering Pokemon. Now, once you've found a Blissey Raid Den, the first thing you're going to want to do in front of it is drop a save and then enter the Raid Den. But when you are entering the Raid Den, make sure you are offline and then challenge as a group. So use that top option on the Raid menu and go into the Raid. That way, just click through the menus and it will spawn random partners with you when you go into the Raid. Now, if you get the Belly Bolt and one of those other three Pokemon, either the Weavile, the Arcanine or the Mudsdale, paired up with that belly bolt with your Mew, then you are looking good. Then beat the Blissey and then leave the raid and move on to the Mewtwo. If you don't get any of these Pokemon or if you only get one of these Pokemon, simply reset your game, come back into the game and re-enter the raid until you do get one of those pairings. Now by doing this setup first with the raid, by going in as a group, you're kind of locking in these partnering Pokemon for any other future raids that you do. And you can go to the Mewtwo Terror Raid event then after that and just make sure that you're using the option challenge alone. This will lock in the partners that you've already set up through that Blissey Raid then and it cuts down a huge portion of this strategy because having the right partners going into this raid is half the battle. You don't want to be going into the raid and then just checking as and when you go into the Mewtwo Terror Raid event. Uh, if you've got the right partners for it to use a calm mind set up the shield and then have to leave again to come back in by doing this step first it really cuts down a lot of the issues with doing this strategy so just make sure that you kind of execute this part of the video correctly 
get your partner in Pokemon set up so every time you go into the raid to battle the Mewtwo, even if things go wrong and you have to run away or you lose the raid, once you go back in again, just make sure you are challenging alone when you go back into the raid and you'll have those partnering Pokemon with you every time you go back into the raid. Right, so for the raid itself, we've been over the Mewtwo build. You've got your partner set up for this raid. We have got the Belly Bolt and we have Weaval as one of our partners. So once you go into the raid, Mewtwo turn zero, as always, it's going to set up a Calm Mind and then throw its shield up. The first thing that you're going to want to do is use Mud Slap for three turns. So that's going to, every turn you use it, reduce the accuracy on the Mewtwo by one stage, meaning that it's less likely to hit those attacks. Now, if you get the RNG rolling in your favor early on in this raid, you will be able to avoid some of the attacks from the Mewtwo, which is going to make setting up in this first stage of the raid a lot easier. So after you've got that third Mud Slap up, then proceed to use one amnesia that's going to boost your special defense by two stages meaning that you're going to be able to take the special type attacks a lot better and Mewtwo at this point will revert to using uh, something like ice beam here so it means that you're going to be able to take that a lot better if it does connect there's a good chance that it might be paralyzed at this point if belly bolt is able to get a discharge off and paralyze the Mewtwo you've got to factor in that its accuracy will be lower here so it's less likely to hit you so you might get fortunate and just avoid all attacks altogether after that amnesia you're going to go for two bulk ups in a row so make sure that you're boosting that defense and attack stat by two stages with two bulk ups then go for another amnesia and then finish this stage off this first stage that we're setting up on with three bulk ups in a row uh, this should put you in a position where you're able to then go for that terrestrialization with your Mew and use your first leech life of the battle. Now, this is what I call stage one of this raid. I've split it up into three stages. You're going to need a lot of RNG to kind of go your way here. You're going to need the belly ball to hopefully paralyze the Mewtwo. It's not essential, but it does help you out. Uh, like I've mentioned before, if Mewtwo is paralyzed, then it's only going to be hitting 75% of the time and with those three mud slaps those three accuracy drops on it it's less likely that the Mewtwo will be hitting you at all allowing you to kind of get this first stage set up so after you've used that first leech live after you've terrestrialized Mewtwo's then gonna remove all of the drops from its side of the field so removing those mud slap those accuracy drops that it has taken to that point so what you need to do from here is set up six more mud slaps reduce that accuracy on the Mewtwo down to minus six and while you're doing this just make sure to keep an eye on your health and use leech life when you need it to recover health because you're still going to have those five bulk ups already under your belt you're going to be plus five attacks so you'll still be doing decent damage and you'll be able to recover a good chunk of health every time you do use one just bear in mind that while you're getting those six mud slaps off um the Mewtwo might hit a few attacks and again you're going to need RNG to really go in your favor here to make sure that you're dodging some attacks because even if you are if the Mewtwo is minus six it can still hit you and things sometimes do not go in your favor and you can have real bad luck with this particular part of the setup but this is kind of phase two of the setup so once you've got the six mud slaps off go for your final bulk up go for your first all out cheer and then proceed to use two more leech lives so after this stage you should get Mewtwo down to a health point where it nullifies the stats on your side of the field. So it's removing all of those bulk ups, all of those amnesias that you've set up already in the battle. So at this stage, you're going to be in a pretty vulnerable position. Just bear in mind, though, that the Mewtwo is still going to have its accuracy at minus six. So it's very unlikely that it will hit, um, but there is a chance that it can hit still with its attacks. Uh, what you want to do here is go for two bulk ups, then one amnesia, and then proceed to use four bulk ups after that last amnesia. So you've got a total of six bulk ups and one amnesia set up. Uh, just leech life as in when you need to again throughout this process. Once you've got about four bulk ups set up, you'll be doing good damage once again to the Mewtwo. So you're going to be able to recover a lot of health. Just try and get kind of two bulk ups and amnesia, two bulk ups before you use that leech life. If you need to, you might not need to. Like I say, the belly ball is going to be on the field firing enough discharges all the time so it might pick up the paralysis and also the Mewtwo's accuracy is minus six so the likelihood of it hitting is pretty low at this stage but this is the second point now once you've got six bulk up set up and then that amnesia what you need to do is go for an attack cheer here and then use three more leech lives which should be enough with that metronome item attached to break the shield at this stage 
Now, as always, if you know about the Mewtwo raid, after the shield is broken, it will proceed to use rest and activate that Chester Berry, and it will kind of get rid of the sleep condition and it also gets rid of all the stat drops on its side of the field. But don't worry about that too much because you've still got all of your stat boosts on your side of the field. You've still got those six bulk ups and that one amnesia set up. So what you need to proceed to do in this final stage of the battle, you're really close at this stage. You really are. Uh, so just bear with me here. You need to use six more mud slaps here. Make sure you use leech life as and when you're setting these mud slaps up until the Mewtwo is on minus six accuracy. And also keep an eye on Mewtwo stats as well throughout this process because you want to make sure that it is down to minus six, but that also the Weavile that you've got partnered or the Arcanine or the Mudsdale is lowering the defense on that Mewtwo with either the layers that the Weavile and the Arcanine have access to or that Rock Smash that the Mudsdale has. Now, as you can see here, Mewtwo's defense after the shield has been broke is down to minus five before we start our onslaught, which is perfect for going forward in this raid. So that's basically what you're kind of stalling for with these mud slaps to also lower the accuracy on the Mewtwo but also allow your partnering NPC Pokemon at this stage to lower that defense that's so your damage output here is going to be enough to kind of finish off the battle once you've got the six mud slaps off and Weavile or Arcanine or Mudsdale is lower the defense on the Mewtwo this is the last stage of the battle. You need to go for one more attack chair here and then start attacking with leech lives. You can see here we use two, which takes it down to barely knocking it out. It just managed to hang on. And at this stage, it will nullify all the stat boosts on your side of the field. Uh, but don't worry about it too much. The Mewtwo is still minus six accuracy. So the likelihood of it hitting is still pretty low. And it is also hopefully going to be paralyzed at this point from that belly bolt discharges. So again, you still need a little bit of RNG to fall in your favor here. But with that metronome attached, you're boosting your leech life. You should be able to pick up the knockout. And as you can see with our final one here, we are able to pick up the knockout on the Mewtwo and do this solo in your game. And if you haven't caught the Mewtwo already, you're going to be able to catch it in whatever ball you want. You'll be able to get all these amazing high cost items, lots of large and XL candies, ability capsules, gold bottle caps, etc. And also, once you finish the raid, if you check your Mew, you will now have access to putting the mightiest mark on the Mew for completing this raid in your game. And that is how you do it without a Nintendo Online subscription. So for those of you out there that don't have access to go on online, that have kind of had this pseudo paywall up for the Mewtwo event, this gives you a way to be able to do it. And like I say, it's not a guaranteed way to do it. And there is definitely more than enough RNG that you need to go in your favor. But if you follow the steps to kind of set up your raid partners, it's going to be half the battle. And then just kind of rinse and repeat this process until you're able to do it using the strategy that we've used in this video with this Mew build. You will be able to do it hopefully by the 17th of September before that Mewtwo raid disappears for good in our games just bear in mind that you're going to have to have a lot of patience to be able to do this in your game but if you follow the steps i'm sure this guide will be helpful and if you do try it out with everything that we've covered in today's video please let me know down below if you are successful in doing this yourself in your game solo it is a huge mammoth task and even if you've done it online i suggest trying this do this build in game and just try it because it's probably one of the toughest challenges that you're ever going to see in a Pokemon game. I honestly feel like there is probably nothing that I've come across yet playing since Red, Blue and Yellow that's ever been this difficult to do by yourself in a game. But um, again, a massive shout out to Supi Pistol for coming up with the original strategy. I have tweaked a few things uh, in this with the metronome over the silver powder that they used. Uh, because I feel like in the end game, it gives you the ability to kind of close out when your stats get removed if you do miss the knockout on the Mewtwo. So um, I hope you find it useful, friends. But that's about it for today's video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this build, this strategy, and if you will be trying it out. And if you have, of course, let me know. I would love to hear the success stories if you've tried it and able to do it in your games. Just have some patience. It's not a guaranteed way to do it, but it does give hope those of you out there that don't have a Nintendo online subscription and also for those of you that want a challenge in the game because this is definitely a huge challenge but hope you found it useful if you have drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content and I will see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye